Welcome back, everybody. And yeah, you guys are probably wondering, hey, what's going on? Where's my boy E at? Uh, yes, sir. That's right. Just going to be me tonight for this podcast. I'm going to be doing a week two NFL recap, breaking down the majority of the games uh, just because, you know, my buddy Eric is not here to help me host. So I'm going to be rolling solo and just kind of doing this myself. And uh, I figured, you know, breaking down my own like picks for next week would be a little bit harder than just doing a week two breakdown. So I figured this is the easiest for me and the best that I can make for you guys. So um, what is going on, everybody? Hopefully you are having a great day. We had action packed week two. Oh my goodness. The NFL is back. We saw wacky things from onside kicks to uh, picked up fumble recoveries return for a touchdown in overtime to just the most insanity of Tyree killed double 50 yard bomb touchdowns craziness. We'll get to it all. But first and foremost, you guys are going to want to check out fantasy six pack on Twitter. They post all of our content, all of mine and Eric's all of their own content. There's plenty of other writers, uh, podcasters like myself and other good news and articles you guys can get out in there. So check out fantasy six pack on Twitter. It's just spelled as it seems fantasy six S I X P A C K. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, we had a little bit of news go on this week, not a whole lot, but there were a couple big things. Number one, Trey Lance broken ankle. So, uh, how ironic they keep Jimmy G and it's kind of all starting to work out. He comes in the game and he leads him to victory and looks pretty good. And ultimately you can't help but think are some 49ers fans, you know, feeling a little bit more comfort because, they have the guy in Jimmy G who brought them to the Super Bowl before, got them the NFC Championship, has been there plenty of times before, won playoff games, as opposed to a rookie, Trey Lance, who not necessarily didn't show at week one, but just is kind of a rookie in a sense because he didn't really play a whole lot last year. So um, we'll get to the 49ers game as well, but Trey Lance, broken ankle, out for the season. Jimmy G is now the starter moving forward, so that's pretty big. Next up, uh, we had a big old skirmish. Wish my boy Eric was here to talk about this. Mike Evans taking yet another dirty shot at Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, yeah, he went at his daddy. Marshawn Lattimore owns Mike Evans. If you look at the past history, Evans, the best thing he can do is pretty much just get a touchdown on the last five matchups. Uh, it's pretty much been Lattimore kind of just holding him to four catches or less. This game, I want to say Evans had four or five catches for 60, 70 yards. Not his best performance. He did have one nice catch. But ultimately, uh, I guess Lattimore was talking crap about Tom Brady. And you know what happens when you talk crap about Tom Brady. You get the boom. And that's what Mike Evans did. Came out of nowhere and laid the thunder on Marshawn Lattimore. So that was that was pretty something to see. Uh, our first, I guess, NFL fight of the year because that was – I'll call it an NFL fight. Uh, there were some other guys that started tossing and turning. Lattimore threw back some pushes and shoves. Ultimately, it was broken up, and Lattimore and Evans were kicked out of the game. And it has been announced that Mike Evans will receive a one-week suspension in which he's already appealing. The final verdict will come out Wednesday, which tomorrow. So you may be hearing this, and it may have already been finalized, which I do believe he's still going to get the one-game suspension. But if he doesn't, then this will be some significant news and make, obviously, uh, Russell Gage – Julio Jones possibly a little less significant to play next week. Uh, the Bucs, they also did make another splash. They noticed they're depleted with Chris Godwin banged up, Julio Jones banged up, Mike Evans expect to miss another week or a week. And now they went out and got Cole Beasley out of all people, the nice veteran slot receiver from Buffalo. Uh, Cole Beasley kind of fits this team in a way of, you know, Brady loves his check down, his slot guys, his Edelmans. And don't mind my dryer if you can hear that. But yeah, he likes it all. And, you know, any other other weapons he can get and Cole Beasley is a player that has been comp to Edelman Wes Welker just not you know the best of that he was kind of like Julian Edelman light so I think that's what he's going to get in Cole Beasley do not rush to your wave wire to add him right away I, I unfortunately don't think he will get into the system and get acclimated in time for him to be valuable because by the time he gets that playbook down and gets everything down with Brady Godwin's going to be back and who knows Julio Jones might even be healthy and then they also have Russell Gage too who's you know a solid wide receiver three as well so uh that's pretty much the only news we had this week um 
All in all, let's talk a little Ravens-Dolphins. This game was one of the more fun games of the week. Uh, the Ravens, they blew a disastrous lead. They, I don't even know how you do this. You're, you're the Ravens. This is like, you can't be doing this, John Harbaugh. You're a veteran, man. You're a Hall of Fame coach. And sure enough, they blew a at least 14-point lead, maybe more, to the Dolphins, in which they just decided not to cover the, not the fastest guy in the, the, the like the field, but the fastest guy like literally in the stadium in Tyreek Hill. Probably the fastest guy in the NFL in Tyreek Hill. And not once, but twice was he caught on the backside of Ravens defenders where the safeties were just like, I thought you had him. No, I thought you had him. I, me? And it was like, no, you cannot let that happen against Tyreek Hill. You guys are in the AFC. Um you, the Ravens, they've played the Chiefs plenty of times. They know this guy's speed. So it's like Harbaugh, I don't know what he was thinking. Obviously, he's got Hamilton, the rookie, deep uh, at safety. I don't know exactly who their starters are, but I know they are banged up a bit. But it, you cannot let guys like Tyree Kill get that deep. And, of course, it wasn't even just Tyree Kill. We saw Jalen Waddle tear him apart, too, with just you know the quick throws and the quick hits and the speed. And honestly, Tua showed it. He proved it today that, or Sunday, I should say, that speed kills and he can produce for not just Tyree Kill, but Jalen Waddle too. So Jalen Waddle, he is on pace, not just to finish for like a good wide receiver two. Honest to God, this guy could finish as a back end wide receiver one with, you know, some help from injuries and just playing a full season. Jalen Waddle, if Tyree Kill misses time, sky's the limit for this guy. He is very, very good. Not to mention the game tying or game winning touchdown, I believe, that he had uh, over one of the Ravens defenders. But uh, let's talk a little more about the ins and outs of the game on the Dolphins side. Raheem Mostert, 11 carries as opposed to Chase Edmonds, five. So that's a little interesting. Maybe they want to get Mostert a little more involved. He did do a little bit with it, like uh, 50 ish yards. So not the best, not the worst. Um, all in all, it was the Tyreek and Jalen Waddle show. They added up to a 62% target share for them both. Um, honestly, probably the best duo in uh, fantasy this week. They both dropped 40 points, which I don't even think that's been done ever, maybe, by two wide receivers on the same team. If it has, um, it's been a long time. Uh, Duvernay, he did have a nice kick return for a touchdown, but... It's fool's gold, guys. Don't fall for it. He only had two targets this week, and he got his bread and butter off that kick return. That's not happening every week. We've seen the kicks. You rarely get a kick return from players unless, you know, you got a kicker that likes to kick it short to the five-yard line. So Duvernay, I am a bit concerned about him. Redraft leagues, he's a possible drop candidate. I hold him for one more week. Dynasty, um, not looking like he's going to be much. If you got weak dynasty benches, I'd probably drop him, try to get something else for him. It's the Mark Andrews show, folks. Uh, the tight ends in the Ravens uh, pass game are the focal point. Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely have a 46% tight end target share, most by far in the league by any tight end group in the NFL. So, uh, Mark Andrews, he has just been phenomenal, led the Ravens in targets both weeks. He's He's been a stud. And then Rashad Bateman, uh, he's starting to come into his own. He's shown he's a legit deep threat with multiple 50-yard uh, touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks. So uh, Bateman, he might be what Hollywood Brown was for Lamar Jackson last year. So we will see. Next up, I mean, I should talk about this game first because it was the first game, and that's the Chargers and the Chiefs. Cannot forget this Thursday night matchup. This was a good one, folks. Uh, we got to see not just Justin Allen, but Pat Mahomes duke it out. We got to see, finally, a little life from Mike Williams. He looked phenomenal, grabbed the ball over dudes, making one-handed catches in the back of the end zone. Dude was a stud, finally showing up, finally showing people that he is this beast. Granted, no Keenan Allen, so that probably did affect it a bit, but he earned some trust with Justin Herbert, no doubt. He he was catching everything thrown to him. Not sure why they went away from him in I, like the full third, like half of the third quarter, fourth quarter. He didn't have one target. Very surprising. But um, all in all, Mike Williams is he's here to stay. I think he's going to be a beast next week. Justin Herbert thankfully has the extended time to you know let his ribs heal, but it. It wouldn't shock me if he missed a week because, you know, you don't want to mess around with these injuries. We, we've seen them before. They could keep a player out for more than a week. It's very similar to what Alvin Kamara is dealing, dealing with right now, and he just missed a week. So uh, Herbert probably will play, but you never know. Um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, he is probably a sell high for me. 
He had just eight rush attempts, and he's starting to look like he's splitting the backfield with Jarek McKinnon. They each saw a 46% rush snap share, and uh, Isaiah Pacheco got the rest of that. So not 100% sold on Clyde. He is getting some passing work, but if you can sell him now, I'm definitely selling Clyde before he either loses his job or just stops, you know, getting these ticky tacky touchdowns and performing well. So, um, all in all, uh, the other disappointment, Juju Smith Schuster, man, <sighs> such a disappointment for me because he was a guy that I was so high on ever since this dude came to the league. I drafted him fourth overall in my very first dynasty startup over guys like Alvin Kamara, Stefan Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, who like stud players like that. And Juju just, I don't know. I don't know. He cannot replicate what he did with Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown that 20... 18, 19 season, I can't remember. But ultimately, I thought he was going to break out with Patrick Mahomes, the greatest quarterback in the NFL. Just did not happen. So Juju Smith-Schuster caught all three of his targets. I guess that's good. But three targets, three catches, 10 yards. Oh, boy. He is tossed to the bench for quite some time, and he could be the bust of the year and my bust of the year because I was very high on this guy, higher than most on him. So that definitely stings. Juju, uh, you never know with him. You got Pat Mahomes, so maybe he could work it out one way or another. But all in all, it was uh, Marquez Valdez scaling and Travis Kelsey leading the way with seven targets each. Um, Kelsey nearly got in the end zone until he got absolutely stuck by Derwin James, so don't really fault him there for not getting the touchdown. But Travis Kelsey should be safe. MBS, that was kind of an illusion, so to speak. Uh, another guy who is kind of here to stay, hopefully, Austin Eckler, he had 14 carries. The backups did have nine, so that's a tad bit concerning. But he had nine catches, so anytime your running back gets nine catches, you're probably going to have a good fantasy week. So he was starting to get used a lot more just all around. His snap shares went up, his targets, his opportunities went up. So uh, not Clyde. Uh, Austin Eckler is seems like he's here to stay. Not necessarily going to be that massive RB1 that he was last year, but – the touchdowns, they will come. They have to. Next up, we had a great game in the Jets versus Browns. Oh, my goodness. This Joe Flacco really does own the Browns. Good for him. He called it and said it, came out and said, like, uh, when they're asking him, what do you think about the Browns? He goes, I don't think we have to worry too much about them, something like that. It's pretty much insinuating this is an easy dub, even though he plays for the Jets. Well, Joe Flacco, uh, cool Joe came out to play. He improved his record to 18-3 and three against the Browns. So, yes, he does own the Browns, kind of like Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears. Uh, Brees Hall, Michael Carter split carry seven each. Joe Flacco and Garrett Wilson were kind of the talk of the town. Garrett Wilson, 14 targets, had his breakout game, eight catches, 102 yards, two touchdowns, and the game winner, in which I just found this out today because I was, you know, they didn't, they didn't really show this or talk about this a whole lot, but Nick Chubb could have easily went down before the end zone. He had a 15-yard run in which he got the first down and kept going. He scored the touchdown going up by 13 points in which Cade York missed the extra point. Jets get the ball back. No timeouts left, and you guys know the rest. So um, Nick Chubb, he has already come out and said he faults himself for that loss. This is also kind of ironic because Nick Chubb was the guy that a lot of fans can remember a Browns game uh, two years ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't remember one team. It was later in the year and he went out of bounds to secure the victory and was pretty much like, sorry, fantasy owners. I play for the NFL. So this was super interesting that he scored his third touchdown off this, you know, run. Maybe he was trying to pad the stats, but nonetheless, Nick Chubb will not be doing this anymore the rest of his career. So this kind of impacts him, honest to God. Um, his, his garbage time and meaningful numbers, like late time numbers, it, it won't meet, it won't be there, but it won't, you know, be super impactful. It'll just this will be once in a while thing where you're like, crap, there's no way Nick Chubb is gonna score the touchdown here. Like, you know, some running backs would. And also it's going to change it for some other running backs. I guarantee you every coach is going to put this on their bulletin board and say, I don't care if you have five touchdowns, you are not getting that six. You are laying down and getting the victory for our team. 
So um, it kind of interesting aspect moving forward. I, I would not be shocked if we saw a lot of running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, whoever have a broken play can easily score that touchdown and they just slide, go down. So that's the, that's what you got to do. We've seen this in the past. This is now the second time in three years where a running back has scored a touchdown and it bit him in the butt. It happened two years, maybe three years ago with Todd Gurley and the Falcons against my Lions. Yes, this is a Dan Campbell bobblehead that we will get shown off again once we come Lions time, but that is not now. Uh, all in all, Jets get the victory 31-30, upsetting my parlay. Ah, actually, another big thing, Amari Cooper's back, I guess. Nine catches, 101 yards, and a touchdown off 10 targets. So uh, Amari Cooper, solid player. Toss him in your starting lineups from here and out. Um, next up, we have the Steelers and Patriots. This was pretty much a low-scoring game. Uh, Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson pretty much seem very tight and tight and touchdown dependent. And it seems like you can't really start either unless one is injured. So, yes, you can start them. It's just more of a dice roll. I honestly give it like a 50-50 chance that they have, you know, 70 yards and a touchdown, which is a solid game. But the other 50% chance is they just have the 70 yards and, and no touchdown. So, it's going to be very split up. This offense for the Patriots is not high scoring at all, as you can tell. The one good thing, I guess, for the wide receivers is um, Nelson Aguilar, possible deep threat, but he's not the guy I want. I want Jacoby Myers. He had 13 targets. Um, he's probably, I didn't list him on my top five waiver wire ads. He's probably number six right there. Um, Jacoby Myers, 13 targets. I like to see that. Anything of, you know, that much volume, he's worth a shot. Um, ultimately, I'm not a fan of pretty much any Patriots to start at least. Maybe toss him on your bench as a dart throw, but that's about it. Deontay Johnson led the Steelers in targets again with 10. Uh, Pat Frymuth went off, had seven targets, had a solid game. And it seems like he's going to be a tight end one. He's been a target monster, just been ultimately very solid for the Steelers. Patriots take this one 17-14. Not a whole lot of fancy stuff to take away. Najee Harris, um, he's starting to concern me. 15 carries, 49 yards, five catches, 40 yards, and six targets. Um, that foot, I've I've mentioned this in the past. He talked about a Liz Frank injury that he had before week one. And I have Liz Frank injuries in that one, but both my feet. So I know kind of how it is. It's painful. I'll be playing basketball, anything with the boys, you know, for an hour. And next thing you know, my inside, my sides, my feet are just on fire. And it's like the only thing you can do is just air them out. And that's the best feeling. I mean, you can rub it and it does feel good, but it just, you have to just let it, you know, die down. So honest to God, this could be something that's bothering him. And if, if his, you know, feet start to flare up in the second half because he took, you know, too many carries, ran too many times, then yeah, it's 100% going to impact because I can remember, you know, it, my feet would start to flare up and I would know like, all right, like I'm going to have to come out of this game soon or we're going to have to stop playing because there's no way I can be efficient. And I'd start running on the, literally the sides of my feet. So I wouldn't have to run, you know, feet flat down. So uh, Liz Frank entries, they are not a fun thing to deal with. We saw Amari Cooper have a lot of struggle with one a few years ago. Um, they're tough. Let's move on to another boring game. Colts Jaguars going to breeze through this one. <laughs> Jaguars shocked the nation, went up 24 nothing on the Colts, just dominated them, made Matt Ryan look like a little baby. Matt Ryan went 16 for 30. The lose of the bum got me minus negative 10 points in the Scott Fishbowl, costing me a victory. I lost by six points in the Scott Fishbowl. Matt Ryan got me a dang negative 10. Ugh, how, like, how does that happen? Come on. Come on. Um, ultimately, it was not a good performance for the Colts. This team, one way or another, they just might be, you know, not the team that we thought. They tied the Texans and now losing to the Jaguars. Oh, boy. Colts, uh, you guys are going to be playing some good teams uh, outside your division. So good luck with them. Jonathan Taylor, nine carries, 54 yards, one target. Not his best performance. He's the one guy I'm not really that concerned with. I will say Michael Pittman, um, he played very good week one. Week two, he was not there. Maybe that's the key for the Colts. Maybe they need, you know, some passing game because they also didn't have Alec Pierce, their star rookie. They were pretty much throwing the ball to guys like Ashton Doolin, Paris Campbell, Mo Alley Cox. These are pass catchers that, you know, a lot of your buddies that if they don't follow football deeply, they've never heard of these guys at all. 
Maybe Paris Campbell if they're, you know, an Ohio State fan, but that's about it. Um, Trevor Lawrence, he's starting to look like a legit quarter quarterback. Um, he went 25 for 30, two touchdowns. Finally starting to piece together and use his weapons, especially Christian Kirk, who is really starting to blossom for this team. Um, Kirk, he had uh, six receptions, 70 yards, two touchdowns off of six targets, so caught all six of his targets. But I will say, we'll say, we'll say, the focal point was Evan Ingram. He had eight targets, seven catches, led the team in receptions and targets, not yards, though that was Kirk. But ultimately, Evan Ingram is a guy that, keep your eye on him, I'm not rushing to my wave wire to grab him. He's probably not going to be picked up by most, but if he has another, you know, game where he leads the team in targets or has a touchdown or something, then Evan Ingram, we saw what he was wanted to be for New York and he just wasn't there. And he's a very athletic guy. So ultimately I'd give him a shot if he proved himself for one more week. So keep your eye on Evan Ingram. Uh, next game. We have an interesting one. Giants versus Panthers. Uh, what am I kidding? This was not interesting at all. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, he had a 100-yard rushing game the first time and honestly, quite, quite some time. But it was good to see that CMC is back. Baker Mayfield just, he does not have it, man. He's not a good quarterback. QBR of 15.9. But, hey, Daniel Jones on the other side had a QBR of 37.1, so not much better. This was kind of just a battle of running backs. CMC 15 for 102 with a long of 49, so he seems to be back. It's just the volume isn't there quite yet. I, I kind of expected this. They're easing him in. If you could go make a trade for CMC because someone's like, oh, he's not scoring me 30 points every week. He's not even getting 25. I hate this guy. Go trade for him because he if he plays all year, you're going to have multiple games of those 30-point games. We've seen it time in, time out. It's just the player Christian McCaffrey is. This dude's a stud, a fantasy monster, and absolutely worth a trade. If you can get him off of an upset fantasy manager because he's not, you know, scored five touchdowns, getting 200 total yards, etc. So ultimately, the Panthers, they didn't really have a whole lot to show other than CMC's 100-yard rushing game. DJ Moore had one touchdown and 43 yards off of six targets. Robbie Anderson was a bit of a bust coming off of a great 100% target, not target, 100% snap share last week he played 100 of the snaps looked good and just fell flat against a i guess could giant secondary i don't even know um ultimately saquon barkley on the other side 21 carries 72 yards a long of 16 not the worst but not the best i'll take that if you're saquon you're kind of just missing the touchdown really he did have three receptions 16 yards four targets i would like to see more but one thing that stood out uh sterling shepherd 10 targets. Um, perhaps he is back. This is some good news for James Robinson guys, Cam Akers guys, anyone with, with Achilles players. Uh, me, myself, Jeff Okuda fan for the Lions. Uh, it seems like uh, the Achilles tear isn't as bad as it once was. We saw how early Cam Akers returned, and now we're seeing what James Robinson doing. Jeff Okuda is playing some solid cornerback, and now we get Sterling Shepard. 10 targets and his second week after going for it, I think like a 50 yard touchdown week one. So um, keep your eye on him too. Not a guy I'm rushing the waiver wire for just because this offense is not the best, but definitely a guy to keep your eye on because we've seen what Shepard can do in the past. Uh, all right, let's head to a, oh God, honestly, I don't even want to talk Buck Saints because this was a boring game too. And I don't have my boy E to defend the Saints here. So um, I don't really want to talk bad about the Saints because you know, granted, they kind of blew this game. They were just kind of outmatched and outnumbered. And Mike Evans was kind of just being a punk this whole game. And Marshawn Lattimore was truly shutting down, like, every wide receiver that was going against him. I don't know why Brady even decided to throw it against Lattimore. It just was not working every single time. So, uh, Tom Brady, he has not looked the best. He's starting to concern me a little bit. But he's the GOAT, man. Tom Brady's the best. I'm not going to, you know, doubt him for too long, I guess, but it is two weeks in. Uh, the Bucks. Uh, let's just see who they're playing real, real quick. Week three, they are playing the Packers, which is interesting, and then the Chiefs. So this is a interesting, interesting uh, first four games the Bucks got. But nonetheless, uh, they took down the Saints, in which I kind of called for this. I figured Brady would be upset about his losing record against the only team in the NFL, the New Orleans Saints, and want to get some revenge. And if he sweeps them on his final, you know, victory two or his last hoorah, guess who has a winning record against every team in the NFL? 
Tom Brady. So he will have a six and five record. It's now five and five against the Saints. They're playing one more time this year. Who knows? Maybe get in the playoffs if the Saints can make it. Um, but ultimately, this game was full of a lot of bad blood. This this is a great rivalry. Honestly, Bucks versus Saints, it's not talked about as much as it should be. Both of these teams hate each other's guts. You saw Brady just screaming, cussing at everyone. You saw Mike Evans, you know, shoving players. He had a more throw and punch, all sorts of goodness. And this isn't the first time this happened. This is actually the second time Mike Evans has gotten suspended for an altercation with Marshawn Lattimore. So um, whatever Lattimore is doing, he's doing a good job because he's getting Mike Evans ejected. Granny got himself ejected, but ultimately when you get shoved in the back, you're going to, you're going to retaliate. So, um, Mike Evans, he's still a guy I like. If he misses next week, that's going to stink. I would look to the waiver wire for Russell Gage. He's probably going to be my one or two top waiver wire targets. I think he can produce very great numbers next week against Green Bay. Uh, the Packers saw Justin Jefferson torch them all around. Granted, the Bears didn't really do anything last week, but that's the Bears. Uh, this is Tom Brady throwing them the ball, not Justin Fields. So um, the Packers do have Jair Alexander. I expect Alexander to be floating around covering all the people, you know, or maybe one side. So not necessarily, you know, locking down Russell Gage all game, but all in all, um, I love Russell Gage this week. I think he's going to be a great play. Do not fall for the Cole Beasley trap. A lot of people are going to jump on him real quick, but it's trap. Like I said, folks, uh, you don't want to get Cole Beasley because by the time he's acclimated, you know, you're going to get Chris Godwin back and possibly Julio back. But then again, you know, if Godwin gets hurt again and Cole Beasley's still there, he could be an, he could be a solid grab later on. Uh, no Alvin Kamara, so that was that. Uh, the Saints didn't really have a whole lot going for him. Um, I will say they did have Chris Olave kind of burst out with 13 targets. He had the third most targets in the NFL this week, maybe the fourth. But ultimately, a solid game for Chris Olave. Uh, 13 targets. You love to see it from the rookie. Michael Thomas, nine targets, one touchdown. He's back, boys. Michael Thomas, uh, slant boy, whatever you want to call him, he's back. He he's If he plays a full season, lock him into a high upside wide receiver two, possible wide receiver one. He's got three touchdowns through two weeks. This dude's looking awesome. Um, wish I had Eric here to pump me up about some Saints guys and give us some Saints breakdown, but we'll get him next week, and he'll give us the whole lowdown. So uh, this week, we're going to get my – Detroit Lions breakdown because, yes, sir, we got some weapons. And that's um, Ra St. Brown, the sun god. Yes, he might be the wide receiver, best wide receiver in the NFL. I might be kidding. I might not be kidding. But this dude is a oh my. Gosh, the sky's the limit for Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, him, Antonio Brown, and Michael Thomas are the only wide receivers with eight straight games with eight-plus catches. Amon Ra can become the first wide receiver in NFL history to have eight straight catches. Eight catches in nine straight games. Uh, pretty pretty impressive. He could also become the first wide receiver to have uh, go six straight games with eight catches and one touchdown. No wide receiver has ever done that. We've only seen two wide receivers go uh, five games with a touchdown. Cooper Cup, ironically, is one of them. He's on that streak. He has a chance to tie Amon Ra's record of six straight games and one touchdown, eight catches. Six straight games, I don't know. I'm worried this weird. Bear with me, folks. But ultimately, Amon Ra, Sun God, he's he's a beast. Oh my gosh, six straight games with a touchdown dating back to last year. Uh, he ties a Lions franchise record with most consecutive games with a touchdown. Yes, this is a Lions team, including Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson. Barry Sanders scored six touchdowns in six straight games, so that was his max. Uh, Calvin did it in five. Amon Ra has a chance to do seven next week against the Vikings, so that should be interesting. Uh, DeAndre Swift looks phenomenal. 87 yards off of seven touches and a touchdown in which he scored a touchdown when he was laying on the ground. Dude literally caught the ball, slipped, fell down, laid on the ground, looked up, got enough time to get back up, break a tackle, make a cut, and get in the end zone. He's just – DeAndre Swift is so freaking good. Love this guy. Honestly, he's a top five back in my eyes. Can't name five better than him. Um, but one guy I can name five better at their position, TJ Hawkinson, man. Hawk has not been it. If he's on your team – Whew, uh, I'm tossing to the bench. I'm trying to look for an alternate tight end option. His alarm is going off for him. He's got seven drops, the most, not just out of any tight end, but most out of any player in the NFL. Just a disappointing year for TJ Hawkinson. He still is that beast with that, you know, that great, you know, rack ability where he can run after the catch. But ultimately, we just haven't seen it and haven't seen the big plays. He's kind of just 
not been there, especially for fantasy football. So TJ Hawkinson, I've not dropped him yet, but he's a guy that I'm probably putting on my bench ultimately. Um, another wide receiver in this game, Curtis Samuel, he broke out. He's finally coming to come, you know, being the guy that a lot of people thought he was for the Panthers. He had nine targets, 19 fantasy points, a touchdown, ultimately a very solid performance. And he was one of my waiver wire pickups. So if you guys are listening, I called out Kirk C- or Kirk Cousins, Curtis Samuel as one of my picks, uh, as along with a couple of guys like Jeff Wilson, Greg Dorch, who, uh, finish with a touchdown or, you know, in the top 30 ish. Um, but ultimately I'm Ross St. Brown, pretty much the only wide receiver I want for the lions. Him and Swift are basically the only two uh, players I want for the lions. Jamal Williams, an excellent handcuffed had 12 carries today uh, or Sunday working with a beat up Deandre Swift. So he's a solid handcuff. I would keep, but honestly, I'm in raw and Swift are the only two guys that you're starting moving forward. It's pretty much that Antonio Gibson. He did get in the end zone to salvage a decent fantasy performance, but ultimately 14 carries, 28 yards, not the best. Uh, He did have two catches for 13 yards. So still not the best. Um, It was Curtis Samuel leading the team in targets with nine. And then my boy, Logan Thomas, five targets, three catches on a touchdown. I like him on the waiver wire. If you need a tight end, need tight end streaming options. I just mentioned TJ Hawkinson. Uh, toss Logan Thomas on your lineup. I'm not exactly sure who the commanders are playing next week. Let's just have a look, see. And they're playing the Eagles, in which the Eagles just let up, you know, five catches off of eight targets to Irv Smith Jr., who had a touchdown as well. And he also dropped a deep pass that possibly could have been like a 50 40 yard touchdown or at least 40 yard catch, but it literally hit him in the bread basket and he dropped it. So, um, Logan Thomas, I'm liking him next week against the Eagles. It seems like the Eagles, you know, haven't been able to stop tight ends. Hawkinson, you know, couldn't get it done against them week one, but he hasn't been the best. Uh, scary Terry, eight targets and styled still, uh, just missing that touchdown. Jahan dots. He looks legit. If he's somehow still on your waiver, wire, hurry up, go add him. Uh, but ultimately if he's not, it's dude's a stuff. Uh, you missed out. <laughs> That's all I could say. Um, let's talk a little four o'clock games action. We had the Seahawks versus the 49ers, in which Trey Lance broke his ankle. That was kind of the story of the game. Uh, Tyler Lockett came to life, saw a 36% target share, went nine catches for 107 yards. So I don't even know. I just don't like any. Honestly, any player for the the Seattle right now, K9, not a fan of Kenneth Walker, Rashad Penny. I know he looked good week one, but with with Kenneth Walker in the backup, I just don't like either. They just did not produce, you know, good enough numbers, you know, for me to, you know, warrant a, you know, flex option or something better. But ultimately, I'm staying away from this uh, Seahawks team. The 49ers, they possibly could be a better team with Jimmy G. They seemed, you know, like they got back on track. Remember, like, like hopped back on a bike almost. It was like, like they got back into rhythm. So Jimmy G, 13 for 21, 154 yards and a touchdown. Jeff Wilson had 18 carries, 84 yards, just missing that touchdown. He also had two carries or two receptions for 19 yards. So he looked solid um, all around. Decent, decent fantasy football day. Uh, it was Debo Samuel, who didn't have the best performance, five catches, 44 yards, and four rushes for 53 yards. I like the rushing, uh, you know, aspect there, but ultimately it was pretty much Brandon Ayuk leading the way, eight targets for the team, and then Ross Dwelly, that little touchdown snatcher. He had one touchdown uh, with one target, of course. So uh, another disappointer, Chiron Davis Price, 14 carries, 30 yard, 33 yards with a long of 20. So he really had. 13 carries for 13 yards, which is not the best if you take out that 20 yard run. But I know, you know, everyone hates when you say if you take out, uh, but I'm just saying, all right, if you did, bear with me. <laughs> um, let's move on to a little bit better game. But first, uh, you guys are going to follow Fancy Six Pack on Twitter. You can check them out at Fancy Six Pack, just as it seemed as spelled Fantasy S I X P A C K on Twitter. Uh, they post all sorts of good stuff, like I mentioned earlier. Check them out on YouTube. If you guys are watching my podcast on YouTube, subscribe to the page. You help not just me, not just Eric, but the whole Fantasy Six Pack family. It, we love all of it. Give us some likes, reviews. It all goes a long way. 
And then if you guys are feeling up to it, check out fantasysixpack.net where you can access the Fantasy Six Pack uh, Discord, the season-long pass, which it has our Discord. It has direct access to our FP, F, S, F, oh my gosh, F6P team, the Fantasy Six Pack team, of course, and weekly AMAs, custom advice for your team, DFS rosters, and, you know, special advice only posted in that Discord, so you're not going to want to miss out on it. It's 30 bucks for the rest of the year. Great deal going right now. Check it out at FantasySixPack.net. Uh, all right, let's check our last few games before we wrap it up and get out of here. The Rams versus the Falcons, in which the Rams, they almost blew a uh, 25 point lead and speaking of 25 or 24 uh just turned 25 shout out to my girlfriend got this little coffee cup right here big spongebob guy right here hopefully anyone watching this is a spongebob fan because i know you guys will appreciate this it's one of the best memes in spongebob but yep you guys know it. what's funny in 24 25 is the funniest age so yes i am the funniest age right now uh so prepare to be you know laughing at some jokes this year uh ultimately the rams like i mentioned they almost blew a big one i uh, we saw cooper cup going crazy he's now had five straight games with a touchdown and eight plus recep receptions he could join amon ross st brown is the only player in nfl history to have six straight games but amon ross has a chance to make it seven straight games so they could just be chasing after each other Tyler Higby, nine targets. He's got major volume. If he's available in your waiver wire, go grab him. He's my top tight end over Logan Thomas. But I like to go for guys or talk about guys with less than a 50% ownership stake. So uh, Tyler Higby's at 66%, a little high. But if he's available in some leagues, which he very well might be, Higby definitely like could be a solid guy moving forward with this type of volume. All he's got to do is get the touchdowns in which Allen Robinson, uh, he vultured one in which probably not a vulture because a lot of people were happy to see this. He's finally starting to get acclimated into the game, had five targets, uh, touchdown, is looking like a little better. It's it's nice we're seeing him in the game, unlike Kyle Pitts, who had three targets, who has not been involved in the Falcons offense at all. Not sure why, but it's just been abysmal for you know the Falcons and just Kyle Pitts owners. Drake London, he is legit. He is that dude. He looks very good. Uh, was I believe fifth tied for fifth in targets amongst all NFL wide receivers or players, actually. So London, he can be the dude there looking like the new Julio Jones. Not going to compare him directly to Julio, but he's looking very good. Um, that's pretty much that for that game. Uh, Tyler Algier and Cordell Patterson each saw 10 carries each, so they're starting to split the backfield a little more. We saw Damian Williams. Uh, he was placed on IR, so that's definitely going to impact their carries. I think Algier will probably be here to stay, getting a little – 40 60 percent snap share split with Cordell Patterson, in which Cordell Patterson will get the 60 percent uh snap share. Bengals Cowboys, this was a wacky one. Uh, the Bengals, I don't know what's going on with them. I lack a, I don't know, Super Bowl hangover loss, whatever you want to call it. But Joe Burrow, he's not looking good. It might be the appendix that he's missing. Um, he just he didn't really play any trading camp, didn't play any preseason. He's been kind of not getting, you know playing with the team a whole lot. So these first two games are kind of like the first two times they're getting on the same page. Uh, so that could be a bit of the prop. T Higgins, he led the team in targets and receptions. So Higgins, he's here to stay. Obviously beast. Tyler Boyd, he's borderline droppable. Had two targets, two catches for 17 yards. Joe Mixon, 19 carries, 57 yards. A solid day, just kind of need that touchdown and missing that uh, reception upside they had last week. Ezekiel Elliott, 15 carries as opposed to Tony Pollard's nine. Zeke had two targets, Pollard had seven. So very similar on the op total opportunities. I think we're going to see this moving forward. Tony Pollard did get the touchdown, did seem a lot more explosive. So it could be a cause for the concern for some Zeke owners and myself. Um, CD Lamb, 11 targets, 35% target share, but still did not get the touchdown, did not have a good fancy performance. Starting to get a little worried about CD Lamb. I'm not the best his first two weeks, but he's a dude that has, you know, serious talent that I, I think can, you know, take it up a notch. So I'm not too concerned. Uh, he's going to see probably a little bit more volume, especially if Dalton Schultz has to miss a week with, uh, some knee injuries. He was banged up a bit. Uh, he got a good, I believe scan back MRI, whatever you want to call it, um, for his knee. So it's not, you know, a season ending, but he probably will miss one game, maybe two, but 
Uh, Schultz, if he misses one game, then CD obviously will be, you know, a solid pick. And of course, Noah Brown, I like this dude. He's a sneaky waiver wire ad. Uh, he's a guy that just, I feel like he's got good connection with Cooper Rush. And that's because they probably played together a lot in not just like practice, not just warm ups, but preseason. So those preseason games, Cooper Rush was totally getting on page with Noah Brown, and they likely have some good chemistry. Uh, we did see, you know, Dak Prescott targeting him a bunch, so maybe he's just a good wide receiver. I don't know. But ultimately, Noah Brown, I'm definitely looking to target him if he is available. All right, let's wrap it up with these last few games. The Raiders and the Cardinals, this was a crazy one. Uh, James Conner banged up. Eno Benjamin Durrell, Williams split carries-ish. Uh, Honestly, I'm more of an Eno Benjamin guy, but I, either or, uh, to each their own. Darrell Williams, yeah, go take either. But ultimately, I, I would grab one of the two. I think they're, either or is worth a shot. We've, we've seen James Conner in the past just be you know injury-prone monster. So if it's already starting week two, it could get worse by the time you're in you know, week seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, Zach Ertz and Hollywood Brown each led the targets in 11 or each led the team in targets with 11 each. So Ertz looking phenomenal. He seems to be a honestly top five tight end upside type player. Greg Dortch caught a touchdown, caught all four targets. Seems like he is starting to carve his way out in the offense, at least while DeAndre Hopkins is still on the bench and suspended. Um, Devontae Adams. This was very interesting. Devontae Adams. Uh, he had the worst game since 2017, week seven of his career, I guess. Um, he had two touchdowns, or no, I'm sorry. He had two catches, one touchdown, and 12 yards off of seven targets. Looked abysmal. Last time he had under 25 yards was 2017, week seven, so it's been a minute. Uh, Hunter Renfro led the team in targets with 10, but he also led the team in fumbles with two. So, cost them the game, but... I don't think that they'll factor in, you know, Renfro. He did take a big hit. It it was, wasn't his fault. I would have fumbled the ball too. If Isaiah Simmons hit me like that. Uh, Josh Jacobs owns the backfield, 19 carries, 69 yards and one target. Just, just missing those touchdowns. Honestly, if the Raiders can get their stuff together and get, you know, red zone opportunities for my boy Jacobs, he can become, you know, that RB one that he showed flashes of from, you know, last year and a couple of years ago. Uh, let's talk a little Sunday Night Football. The Bears with the Packers. I don't know why they put this game on every Sunday Night Football game, but they just love to. Um, Packers always blow them out. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we did see, you know, the, the, the Bears come down, score a touchdown quick, start to look good. But ultimately, the Packers were just a much better team. David Montgomery had 15 carries, 122 yards, showed he still has life. Justin Fields, uh, 11 passes. Really? 11 passes? Oh, that was terrible. I don't know what's going on with him, but he should have had a second rushing touchdown, so his fantasy performance should be a little better on the day. He's a guy that keep your eye on if you need a quarterback because we did see, you know, Dak Prescott go out, Trey Lance go out. So, you know, quarterbacks are starting to get injured. It's happening. So keep your eye on Justin Fields. If you have an open spot for him, throw him on your bench. He does have that runner upside. So if fa fancy football quarterbacks, that's exactly what I look for. If you can have that rushing upside, take him. We see what, you know, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, just, Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts is who I try to mention. Lamar Jackson and now Justin Fields, what they can do. So Fields had one touchdown. Honestly, I don't know why they lined him up in shotgun. Should have just did the old bush push. Got one inch, would have been simple as pie, but they decided to let him shotgun and do something stupid. Um, honestly, the guy I'm, I'm this concerned about, two guys, Darnell Mooney, he only had two targets. Not dropping him yet, but I am getting concerned he is dropped to my bench, that's for sure. Uh, you can drop Cole Komet, though. He, I, I don't even think he saw – oh, I'm sorry. He did see one target, and he dropped. Hit him right in the chest, dropped it. So uh, Cole Komet, not the guy that a lot of people thought he was going to be. Khalil Herbert, um, he's a great dynasty grab because Dave Montgomery is likely gone next year and Herbert's here to stay. So if you can, you know, make a trade for Khalil Herbert, he had four rushes for 38 yards. He's a very good backup running back, but he just doesn't have that role right now in which he could have next year. So he's a guy I'm looking for in dynasty, especially if he's on, you know, a, a if you're trying to rebuild at what I'm getting at. Uh, Aaron Jones, he's a primetime god. 15 carries, 132 yards, two touchdowns. Just looked phenomenal. A.J. Dillon still got a solid piece of the pie with 18 carries. No wide receiver had more than four targets, and that was just Sammy Watkins with four. Uh, there were six wide six players with three targets, so uh, do not want any of this Green Bay wide receiver core. They're just... Staying away. Sorry, no Romeo Dobbs. Not yet. No Alan Lazard. Not yet. No Tanya. No Sammy Watkins. No Christian Watson. No, 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 no. I don't want him. 
Uh, let's wrap things up with um, the Bills Titans. Another blowout. I'm, you know, not not super worried about Derrick Henry. This was the Bills. They're a very good team. Henry had 82 yards the week before, and they were just pretty much being blown out all game. So it just it was not Henry's game. We also saw Taylor Lewan go out early, so they were missing a stud lineman. Um, ultimately, he did get a touchdown. So Henry's touchdown upside. He still is, you know, that beat that goal line beast. He can get it in there. But um, he's the only Titan I want right now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm like, I don't want, you know, Traylon Burks. Don't want Robert Woods, Kyle Phillips. None of those guys. Not even Tannehill. But Blake Willis gets that starting job. You just got to keep your eye on Because like I mentioned with Justin Fields, he's got that rushing upside. So not saying it now, but if Tannehill starts to play worse and worse, you know, you never know. Uh, Stephon Diggs showed he's, you know, he is him. He's got that dog in him. 12 catches off of 14 targets, 148 yards, three touchdowns. Just it, honestly a stud, a absolute beast, rivaling Cooper Cup for that top wide receiver spot uh, on the season. James Cook had 11 carries, but this was likely due to a blowout victory. They're trying to get the Rook involved, and they did not have any Gabe Davis, so that is likely due to, you know, Diggs having a monster game. I expect Davis to have one of those three touchdowns, but I really think Diggs, he's here to stay. Allen is so good. He, he is honestly, he's this guy's really good. And if Stefan Diggs just, you know, stays healthy, honestly, he, he could be a league winner. He, he looked very, very good. These first two games, five touchdowns in two games. What more could you ask for? Um, let's re uh, close it out with our second Monday night double header. And that's the Vikings versus the Eagles. Ugh, this was of course, Kirk Cousins. I don't know why they decided to put him on Monday Night Football. He's terrible, 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 terrible. Three interceptions looked just awful. Made terrible reads. Should have had like 15 interceptions, honestly. There was multiple dropped interceptions by the Eagles. But ultimately, Darius Slate just shut down Justin Jefferson. He had two interceptions. Uh, Kirk Cousins, like I mentioned, had three interceptions. Dalvin Cook, six rushes, 17 yards. Not his best performance. Justin Jefferson, six catches off of 12 targets. Not his best performance. But the one guy... On the Vikings that did, you know, show some life, show, you know, some upside. That was Irv Smith. Caught the one touchdown for the Vikings, had eight targets, and he almost had a second, but he dropped. It was hit right in his hands, right in the bread bath, like I mentioned earlier this episode. And they just, I don't know what happened. He dropped it. He probably could have scored because he's a very fast tight end, but it would have at least been a 40-yard catch solid play for him. It, it was pretty much the Jalen Hurts show for this whole game. He looked phenomenal. He had two rushing touchdowns, one 26-yard rush, which just he, – he's a stud. Honestly, looked so much better from what he was last year. The passing is a lot better. And um, ultimately, he's helping out guys like Devontae Smith, who starting to show promise, seven catches, seven targets, 80 yards. So Devontae Smith, he's still probably going to keep on your bench, but once he proves himself one more time, then you can look, look at him to be a solid flex option. Um, but all in all, folks, that's all I got. That is week two recap. Uh, as always, check me out on Twitter at EverydayFFB. Here we go. Uh, I post all sorts of good stuff, good fantasy football stuff. Each week, each week I post probably Tuesday, Wednesday, on all sorts of fantasy facts, stats, stuff I find, all my notes of you know the previous week. So you guys are going to get a lot of good stuff if you're checking me out on Twitter. And as always, check out Fantasy Six Pack on Twitter at Fantasy, S-I-X-P-A-C-K, Fantasy Six Pack on Twitter. But, boys and girls, that is all we have for you today. As